and welcome to the Disney News Show. Here's your host, Corella's Fur Coat. Yes, this is the Disney News Show. I'm Joe Worthington, aka Corella's Fur Coat, and this is episode 88 for Sunday, 21st of July, 2013. Now, how is everybody? I hope you've had a great two weeks. Once again, I apologise for not having a show um, online last week. I did take a week off. Um, I had a great holiday, and um, so sorry about that. But I hope you didn't miss me too much, and I hope you managed to find out all this news from somewhere else if you're interested. If not, I will have a, um, a recap of kind of the past two weeks' news on the show today, and that means we've got loads and loads of great stuff to get through today. Probably going to be a li little longer than normal this week's episode, just because I've got so much to cram in and so much fantastic news as well. Now, um, so much has been happening over the past two weeks. Of course, on um, on Tuesday. No, was it Tuesday? No, it was Wednesday. So Wednesday, it was the um, on Wednesday, seventeenth of July. It was the fifty-eighth anniversary of um, of Disneyland, and so that was um, a pretty big thing. And of course, um, loads of celebrations going on, and um, it's absolutely fantastic. Fifty-eight years is um, some pretty good going, and um, so yeah, really, really wonderful um, stuff there. And um, it's also Comic Con weekend right now. And so um, there's been some great kind of announcements, not just from Disney, but from all around the world, all the different, uh, well, everything really is at Comic-Con. We've got some great news from uh, both Once Upon a Time and Marvel, which I will be um, talking about at the end of the show. So stick around for that if, you, um, if you're if you interested in that kind of stuff. So um, that is that. And also, before we get started right now, I'm just going to give a... Quick shout out to um, The Curious Labyrinth, who is a Disney, well, it's a Disney blog um, all about Disneyland Paris. And um, it's a great blog, you should definitely go and check it out. It was actually their one year anniversary last Sunday. So I should have really done this shout out, well, if we would have made a show last week. But it was that their show last week. And they, won, they ran a competition, which is really, really awesome. And so definitely go check out their blog. The blog is down below. Uh, I mean, link to the blog is down below. And so um, I really appreciate it if you go and check them out. and. Um, fantastic stuff there. So um, that is that there. Um, I do have a couple of things to show you. Uh, over the past weeks I've actually picked up a well three DVDs, three Disney DVDs. Um, you may have seen I did an unboxing the day of this movie. It is Make, the, Make My Music on DVD. Now this is the very first time that this has been available here in the UK so I just had to get it as soon as it was released um, on Monday. Uh, my unboxing on Friday. There's a link to that down below as well. Sorry. Lighting again. Lighting's always wish it was when you've got DVDs to show laughing around in there. But um, yeah, so I've not got around to watching it yet. I'm, soon I'm going to hopefully be able to do um, kind of the whole 50, 52 um, movies one after another and do reviews of them all and stuff like that. Hopefully very, very soon. Now that I've got Make My Music, which is the final one that I needed, um, I've not got them all. I've actually, there's three more that I don't have, um, but this is the final one that they need to release. And now that I have that, it's kind of made me want to get the other three, which are Three Caballeros, Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, and many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which are three that I don't own. So maybe I'm going to try and get them this week, maybe, and then I'll be able to start my reviews, hopefully sometime soon. So there is my music review, uh, well, my unboxing video down below. Um, and the other two are classics that, and it's amazing that I've never ever owned these on. Well, I probably have owned this one, this Little Mermaid. I picked up Little Mermaid, the two disc special edition, plasma edition this week because it was just such a big hole in my collection that um, I just needed this so badly and you may say why didn't I wait till the Dan edition is released later this year and the reason is because the Dan edition will just be a one single disc and I do want to get it on Blu-ray and so once I have something on Blu-ray I don't really want to get it on DVD so I want to get the DVD first and i um, really really happy about this, it's a two disc, it's um, one disc there and no frustration, certain that this is, um, this is Official Disney, like you, this, Little Mermaid is the most copyrighted Disney, uh, not copyrighted, pirated Disney movie of all, and um, you never, can never be too sure. But I'm pretty sure with this one that it's the real thing. And the other one is classic number 29. It is The Rescuers Down Under. Um, again, really happy to have this one now. And um, yeah, I, I've not watched this on DVD yet, but I saw it a couple of weeks ago on on. Um, on TV and I really enjoy it and I think it's great so I'm really happy to have that one as well so soon I'll be watching them all and um, doing my reviews so stick around for that in the near future okay moving on to the Disney question of the week now um, 
Let's talk about last week's question, well, two weeks ago from episode 87, and that was all about Bob Iger's future as CEO at Disney. Now, it was announced that his, um, his contract had been extended until July 2016 from March 2015. And so I asked you, what do you think of the fact that Bob Iger may be leaving the company, well, most probably will be leaving the company in 2016? And I think it's fair to say that we all pretty much love Bob Iger and what he has done with the company. He's an amazing guy. And I think it's fantastic for that's the work that he's done for, for Disney. And what's also come through from your comments is that we, we also trust that he will know when to step down as CEO. Now, he wouldn't do it at, the, at um, a time when he's needed him. Well, not not needed, but, you know, um, he wouldn't do it unless he has someone else to take over who can share his um, vision and continue his success at the company. So that's probably the really most important thing is that he will have someone else and I think that is pretty certain that he would do before he stepped down he would um he would have someone there to carry on his legacy. Now um it's also interesting um, to see that lo lots of you want him to be able to see through and to continue with all the projects that he's that he's acquired like especially Lucasfilm and Marvel. Now Marvel Marvel is up and running, it's all going out at Disney. But Lucasfilm, which is not really kind of it's not really um properly started up yet um, with the with the movies, with Star Wars and the Star Wars land possibility uh, for Disney Hall Studios. Now, um, I would really like him to be there for the whole, um, well, to see it whole, at least for the three movies, the Star Wars movies. Now, if he steps out in 2016, then that's only leaving room for one movie because the other ones don't be released until later. Now, at least he'll get the chance to do the one, and that's probably why his contact was extended past 2015. But, um, but yeah, so we'll have to wait and see what happens on that. But um, it was great to hear you, your views on that. Now, this week's um, question, um, let's, let's give you a bit of backstory here. Now, it's been announced this week that Johnny Depp's production company, Infinitum Nihil, or Nihil, I don't know how you say that, um, is moving their production from Warner Brothers over to Disney. So that means that um, Infini Infinitum oh, sorry, <laughs> Nihil um, is going to be developing films with Johnny Depp that could be produced by Disney, so they'll all be produced by Disney. Now, um, this this kind of involves films such as, well, ones that Warner Brothers have been, Child and Chocolate Factory, um, Dark Shadows, that kind of, those kind of movies that, um, they were both Tim Burton movies, but um, it's not so sure whether Tim Burton will be, um, will be involved in this. But um, this means we're going to be seeing a lot more of Johnny Depp's name attached to Disney um, distributed movies. Now, it won't include the already announced projects of Pirate, Pirates of Caribbean 5, Alice in Wonderland 2 and also Into the Woods which Johnny Depp has been in talks um, with Disney to appear in. Now um, it will include a lot more kind of st uh, soul um, just Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp kind of movies and personally I feel the audience are getting kind of tired by the current Johnny Depp character which is pretty much the same in every movie he does. Um, you can kind of see the same same character in Pirates, in Alice in Wonderland, in Chan Chaka Factory, in everything, it's just standard Johnny Depp. And I don't know, is this a good or bad move for Disney? Like, should Disney have um, should taken on Johnny Depp so so willingly? I think that with with all the movies that he's got, with especially just Low Ranger, which has just come out, and um, which has kind of it has flopped, really, hasn't it, at the box office? Um, and um, that was a Johnny Depp movie. And I don't know what's happening here, like, I feel like I prefer Johnny Depp to kind of be stepping away from Disney rather than becoming more involved as it looks like he's going to be doing here. So I'd like to hear your views. Are you a big Johnny Depp fan? Is this great news for you? Do you want to see more Johnny Depp films with that Disney name above them? Or do you think this is a bad move for Disney? Do they think that um, they should look for someone else, like we've had enough Johnny Depp? Personally, I love the character of Captain Jack Sparrow and I would love to Disney to carry on making Pirates movies forever. I think they're fantastic and people just don't um, don't agree with me on that and that's fine. And I know there are lots of people who think that Pirates is over, Pirates should ne they should never have made Pirates 4. Personally, I want them to carry on making that and um, then movies. And we know we've got Pirates 5 coming up, but um, I don't know. Let's, let's wait. I'd love to hear your views. So that is this week's question. Johnny Depp and his production company moving over to Disney, good or bad thing? Um, please leave your comments down below and I will read out um, kind of some of the views on next week's show. Okay, so now moving on to the, this week's 
big Disney news. Now we actually have two pieces of big Disney news from over the past two weeks. And the first one is that the is the release of the first trailer for Saving Mr. Banks. And Saving Mr. Banks is an upcoming Disney movie released this um, this Christmas. And it tells a story of um, Walt Disney's um, kind of journey to create the Mary Poppins books and his um, his relationship with uh, P.L. Travers, who wrote the who wrote Mary Poppins, and it's her, it's kind of their story, um, because P.L. Travers did not want to give up the rights to her book, and he didn't want Walt Disney to make the movie, and by the end, of course, he did make the movie, and kind of it's their relationship, like, and it shows it shows all that, and for me, this is something that I've always wanted to see. Um, on the screen ever since I read about this um, a few years ago and I think it's an incredible um, incredible story and especially at the end of Walt's life well not, not too well it actually is it was quite um, close to the end of his life and how he um, and it shows a lot about um, about the movie making process and all that kind of stuff and I'm so excited for this movie like when I first saw that trailer I was absolutely blown away absolutely like I thought it was absolutely perfect and I love all the kind of um, I thought it was incredible, incredibly funny. I think that um, I think that they've gone and done an incredible job. Now it stars Tom Hanks as Walt Disney and Emma Thompson as P.L. Travers, and you should definitely go and check out this trailer if you haven't done already. Now um, I'm just so excited. I can hardly explain how excited I'm for this. People are saying that um, it's not going to be absolutely perfect. Like Tom Hanks doesn't look like Walt Disney, doesn't sound like Walt Disney, but that's not the big deal for me. I think that. The fact that they're making this story and um, into a movie, and it doesn't really matter that he doesn't really look like Walt Disney. Um, sure, not no one really looks like Walt Disney, and to get such um, an incredible actor like Tom Hanks on board um, is is amazing in itself. And I'm sure he's done an incredible job, and um, I can't wait to see this movie. So definitely give me your views on that. And so that is a pretty big piece of news, and I cannot wait to see that movie later on this year. Next up, it is the announcement of the Disney Legends inductees um, to be what well, to be at the Disneyland Legends ceremony at D23 next month. Now there are eight um, eight people involved in this this year. First up is Disney Imagineer Tony Baxter, who um, who developed many um, attractions, including Big Thunder Mountain, Journey into Imagination, and Splash Mountain. Now T Tony Baxter, personally, I think this has been a long time coming. I think. Um, he's an incredible guy who's done incredible work with, Ima with Imagineering and so well well deserves and I think this is wonderful that he's involved in that this year. Colin Campbell, um, he worked on, uh, as well on Imagineering and he developed the um, en Enchanted Tiki Room and Pirates of the Caribbean which are two incredible attractions and so um, well deserved again there. Dick Clark, um, it's an interesting one really, I hadn't heard of Dick Clark and apparently he's a rock and roll star best known for his uh, for the host of ABC's annual New Year's um, Rocking Eve um, kind of show, I guess, from 1973 to 2011. Now, how this is involved in Disney, apart from it just being on ABC, um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I, I've never heard of him, but maybe I need to watch some of his stuff um, and get um, get kind of better. Um, kind of view of why he is involved in this, but I don't know if you've got any information on Dick Clark that I should know, please let me know because I would love to find out more about him. Next up, we have Billy Crystal, of course, the voice of Mike Wazowski in uh, Monsters Inc. and Monster University, as well as John Goodman, the voice of Sully um, in both of their movies as well. I don't know, um, I, this was really, it was quite shocking to hear that, that not shocking in a bad way, that sounded really bad. Um, I was I was shocked to hear that they were involved. I hadn't thought at all that they may have been um, may have been made into Disney Legends. Of course, they are um, they are great, great actors, great um, the great voice work for these two movies. It is a bit soon. I mean, Mon Monster University has only just come in cinema as well um, a couple of weeks ago. It is a bit too soon for them to become Disney Legends. This is for me the same feeling I had when um, Anika Noni Rose was given her Disney Legends um, award back in twenty eleven. Only after was it two years after um, Pinson of the Fog was released, or maybe not even two years, and so I don't know. Like we'll have to we'll have to see. Um, but and the great guys, and I'm really happy that they they've been involved. But um, I was quite shocked um, to hear what that they had been they had been given the um, award. <laughs> okay, next up, very 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 well deserved. Uh, 
award going to Steve Jobs, of course the uh, founder of Apple and also an early investor and CEO of Pixar. Now many people don't know that but he was um, he was involved in the, the birth of Pixar and um, so that's, that's an incredible, incredible thing. And he also became the Walt Disney Company's largest shareholder overnight when Disney acquired Pixar in 2006. So he was a big player there, he was a big guy on the board of directors and um, so um, wonderful to see that he is involved. Um, next up we have Glenn Keane who is a Walt Disney Animation Studios animator who has animated characters such as Penny in The Rescuers, Elliot in Peace Dragon, Rattigan in The Great Mouse Detective, Beast in Beauty and the Beast and the, um, the titular characters in Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Pocahontas and Tarzan. So a vast array of incredible characters there that Glenn Clean um, did animate and so wonderful um, achievement there. And finally, I was really, really, really happy to see that Ed Wynn has been given a Disney Legends um, title. He played, of course, Uncle Albert in Mary Poppins, um, incredible character and I think he did an incredible job there, as well as the voice of the Mad Hatter in, um, in Alice in Wonderland. Great, great um, announcement there that Edwin is involved. And so, um, yeah, so there we go. There are the Disney Legends inductees now. I'd like to know your thoughts, if you've got any thoughts on them. Um, as well as who's Dick Clark, <laughs> but you know, um, great, great stuff there. Okay, moving on to the parks news now, and this week's Limited Time Magic is at both Walt Disney World and Disneyland, and it is the, at the release of a new line of ear hat ornaments at the Disney parks. Um, sure, Disney, Limited Time Magic, if you want to call it that. And this is in similar style to kind of last year's release. There are ornaments based on characters, attractions, and movies, and they'll be available from today at locations around Disneyland and Walt Disney World and also on DisneyStore.com forward slash holidays and so basically this week's Limited Time Magic is the release of some merchandise and so um, yeah I guess we did have we had long lost friends week at Walt Disney World last, last week so you can't really complain but you know um, I don't know this, this is not really Limited Time Magic because these are going to be available now um, until Christmas and I think and you know, nothing's too early at Disney, but is it too early really to be calling this limited time magic when it's Christmas based things um, in July? I don't know, um, but <laughs> there we go, limited time magic. Special um, ear hat ornaments now available at Disney Parks. Okay, moving on to the Walt Disney World news now. And the very last retail store located on Pleasure Island at Downtown Disney has now closed. Now this store was Apricot Lane and it was a clothing store which had been open for only two years since August 2011. But now of course with the whole um, regeneration into Disney Springs, they've had to close down the store. And so that does mean that, they, that there's no more stores on Pleasure Island. So. Uh, construction is ongoing and um, it, I'm really excited to see um, how this takes off now. I'm sure it'll be getting bigger and better all the time at this construction and I'll bring you more information as I get it. Next up, at the Tangle restrooms in Fantasyland at Magic Kingdom, there is now a U USB device charging station. Now, they are located kind of very, um, actually, not, they're not that hidden, but they're kind of, they're, they're integrated into these tree stumps in the seating area and they can be used to charge iPhones and iPads if you have a USB cable. So all you have to do is you have to carry around your USB cable. And if you want to, if you have taken so many photos and recorded everything that you have run out of, um, run out of charge, or if you've been using the Wi-Fi, um, if you can use the Wi-Fi, if you can get it to work, then um, you can go and charge these up at the Fantasyland restrooms. And so um, I think that's a good idea. I think it's quite um, an innovative thing that Disney are doing there, letting you um, have the chance to charge up your phones. There are only two slots though and I think if everyone gets this idea they're gonna have to be kind of either people <laughs> like, I don't know I don't know because like, if someone's if there's gonna be long queues for this I don't think it's gonna be worth it because you're gonna have to spend time charging it up and um, that takes time as well but I don't know maybe it's just for whilst you're whilst your friend, fam, friends and family are in the best rooms you can um, did I say best rooms? Best rooms. You can uh, you can charge up your your phone, but I don't know. But that, I think I think it's quite a cool thing that they've done there. Okay, next up, each of the parks is being equipped with a My Magic Plus um, service centre. Now this is where you can go, kind of if you've got any difficulties or any problems with your with your My Magic Plus wristbands or any of the any of the features that it has. Now at Magic Kingdom, this is in Town Square Theatre, and at Disney Hollow Studios, this is going to be taking over part of the Hollywood Boulevard. Um, store named Sid Canhuenga, Canhuenga, and that's how you say it, 
um, Kanhuenga's one of a kind um, store and it's set to be um, become the part of service centre. Now it will be at the entrance area to the store whilst the remaining area will be still dedicated to selling selling uh, merchandise. Now um, the centre there is scheduled to open in the first week of August so not very long now and of course because my Mind Plus is um, kind of pretty much nearly there, fully up and running uh, in many areas now and um, so great to see that they're, they're rolling out these service centres at the parks. Final piece of Walt Disney World news now is that at Epcot there has been a change to the entertainment schedule at the Rose and Crown pub at the UK Pavilion. From now on there will be no Hat Lady show um, performed at the Rose and Crown pub. There will still be music, so don't worry you've not lost the music, and the Hat Lady will still be there but just to play the piano, she will not be singing any longer. So just bear that in mind if you head into the Rose and Crown pub from now on. I never got time to see the Hat Lady show, but um, I've heard it's really cool. And so yeah, it'll no longer be the, the full Hat Lady show that, we, that we've seen before. Okay, so now it's the news from Tokyo Disneyland. And next year, Tokyo Disneyland's Jungle Cruise will be changed to incorporate new elements never before seen at the attraction. Now the current version has been in place since the park opened in 1983, and it's very similar to what is found at the US parks. Now in the next version, this is kind of what's going to be going to be happening, the Jungle Cruise Skipper will have a startling encounter with an animal spirit guardian in the ruins of a lost jungle temple. Now it will also feature a new soundtrack and special effects. There will also be a permanent after dark night cruise version that will offer guests a unique take on the jungle adventure. So this sounds really really cool and I like the fact that they're changing uh, the Jungle Cruise to be something com completely new and very exciting there. So I will um, I will, when we have got a proper uh, official date, I will give that to you. But yeah, that's, that's sometime in probably early 2014, or, well, it could be late actually, I don't know. But um, probably um, sometime next year. Anyway, so that's, um, that's going to be happening at Tokyo Disneyland. Okay, so moving on to the other news now. And first up, there have been rumours recently that Disney is planning to make a new live-action version of The Jungle Book. Now, it's been reported that Disney is currently looking for a director, and that writer Justin Marks um, is on board to write the script. Now, some of you may remember that Disney did attempt to um, make a live action version back in 1994, which performed pretty poorly upon its initial release. So maybe Disney's hoping that um, this one will do them better. We're not sure if it's going to be a musical version, if it's going to be just gonna be a, like a um, regular version, and if there's going to be talking animals, non talking animals, you know, that kind of stuff. That's all kind of considerations that they have to put into this. But you know, I'm. Um, I'm excited, I think, um, I love Jungle Book, and I think um, it'll be really interesting to see what they do here. Let me let me know what you think, um, do you want to see another Jungle Book um, let's see, a kind of live action remake, or do you think they should stick to ones that they haven't done before, such as The Little Mermaid, which is one that I would really, really like to see. Um, so there we go, let's see, um, let's see what happens there, but so, yeah, so let, just bear that in mind, they may be making a Jungle Book um, live action remake. Kind of. Okay, so moving on to the news from San Diego Comic Con, and uh, first up, there was the, the big Marvel panel. Now, the Marvel panel was really, really fantastic, and especially, um, some of you may have seen it, that um, Tom Hiddleston came out, is that how you say his name? Oh, maybe I got it wrong, but you know, the guy who plays Loki, um, he came on, and he was in character the whole time he played Loki, and it was really, really awesome, and um, that was really fantastic. They also went on, they spoke a lot, they spoke about Thor, Captain America, and a lot about Guardians of the Galaxy, they had the full kind of cast of Guardians of the Galaxy, which has only just started filming, so it was really cool that they managed to get them all out um, to San Diego when they were actually filming here in London. So, um, so it was great that they managed to get out there. But kind of the biggest news um, was when Josh Whedon came on and he had some information about Avengers 2. Most importantly, the actual name of the, um, of the Avengers 2. And the, the title is going to be The Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, Ultron is the, the big baddie, the big villain in Avengers 2. Or, oh, no, I shouldn't call it that anymore, I'm just I'm used to that. The Avengers Age of Ultron, though it takes a bit long, I might just say Avengers 2. Um, but, but yeah, so that's very exciting, and I cannot wait to get more information about that. However, they've not released any of the proper footage that was released there. Marvel is not releasing it officially. I'm sure there'll be a way to get it, hold of it somehow, probably... Um, on, online, but Marvel is not releasing any of them with of, their, of the kind of official um, videos that they did release at Comic Con. But um, but yeah, so it did look really awesome. And definitely have a look into it if you're a big Marvel fan. There were some great announcements yesterday. 
Okay, and next up, moving on to Once Upon a Time, we um, have got some pretty big announcements of upcoming characters, and in a well, in, in the panel, at the very, I'm going to skip to the end of the panel actually because the biggest probably thing for me was at the very end of the panel and that was when we saw um, a short promo video release showing Leroy um, Leroy, the well, grumpy, the dwarf, was um, having a sandwich and, um, oh shit, do I want to tell you? Okay, now I'm not going to go through it all, but the, the kind of the end of it, I'm not going to say everything because it's just in case you want to watch it but um, at the very end we do see Ariel, Little Mermaid is going to be in season three. We, well, we don't actually see her face, but we see her red hair. Um, she goes into the water and flips her fins, and oh god, it was incredible. I mean, I cannot wait to see Ariel in the season three of Once Upon a Time. So, so excited for that. I cannot wait. And um, so it's great to see that they... Well, I know that Ellie and Adam are both big fans of Little Mermaid, and they've wanted to have her in for a while, so it's good to see that they're finally getting her involved. There was also a... Um, kind of a little um kind of what do I call it like a mock of um Good Morning America Good Morning Storybook now um that was really cool and they had they kind of included David Anders as Dr Whale um also Megan Ory was there as um as Red that, she stole the show in that she was fantastic and um so that was really cool definitely check that out if you can um and other announcements um Tinkerbell is definitely going to be appearing in season 3 Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic news there, and um, also it was announced last week, not at Comic Con, but Giancarlo Esposito, who um, played Sidney Glass or the Magic Mirror and the Genie and all them characters, um, is is returning to Once Upon a Time in season three. Fantastic news there. Um, he is playing um, Sidney in some of the early season three episodes. Now he was absent completely from season two. Probably because they couldn't get Jane Carlo Esposito back from Breaking Bad, I believe he's in. But um, hopefully now we're going to have to get a few episodes of him in early in the season. Just like we got with Sebastian Stan last year playing the Mad Hatter. Um, he's going to be there. Um, so yeah, fantastic news there. So loads of Once Upon a Time stuff. Finally, um, the premiere date was announced. 27th of September, Sunday, 8, 7 Central. And so fantastic stuff there. Um, just loads of great news, and I, I love getting Once Upon a Time news. Um, the other kind of bit, kind of Once Upon a Time, it is Once Upon a Time, it's Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Now, there was a kind of a panel as well for Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, um, featuring Eddie, Adam, and all the cast. And kind of the biggest announcement from that is that Naveen Andrews, who played um, Saeed on Lost, has been cast as Jafar. And um, Jafar the Genie, yes, Jafar from Aladdin, in Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Now, this was really interesting. I had heard that maybe Jafar was going to get involved, but I didn't know he was going to be in Wonderland. And he is probably going to play quite a prominent role in um, in Wonderland. And so, very, very exciting stuff. Um, probably to do with um, the other genie that we know. Um, he's going to be there, Cyrus, who's going to be in Once Upon a Time. But... Let's wait and see. Very exciting. I love Naveen Andrews. I think he's fantastic. And I think he was great uh, in Lost. And I cannot wait to see more of him in um, in Once Upon a Time Wonderland. Premiere date for that is Thursday 10th of October. Again at 8, 7 Central. And um, very exciting stuff there. So loads of Once Upon a Time things coming up very soon. And so very exciting stuff there. How many times have I just said that? Sorry, have I just said exciting? Like, way too many times. Moving on now to... Um, the last announcement that I have from Comic Con, and that is their announcement from the creators of Phineas and Ferb. And next year, there will be an hour long crossover between Phineas and Ferb and, wait for it, Star Wars. Um, that's currently in development, yes. There's going to be kind of very similar to the Phineas and Ferb crossover with Marvel, which with the Avengers, which has happened um, this year. So, this is, for, for some reason, this is, this is some big news for me. I mean, Yes, I still haven't seen Star Wars, and that is actually that is a big um, plan of mine. I do want to watch Star Wars in the next couple of weeks. I'm hopefully planning on going out, getting the Blu-rays hopefully soon, and I can get sit down and watch them. But the plan, the, the exciting thing is that possibly this is going to be start the transition of Star Wars: The Clone Wars over onto Disney XD, um, not Disney Channel, but Disney XD, because they're currently still over on Cartoon Network. Now um, it'll be interesting to see like what happens there. But um, very exciting stuff there, I'm sure, for um, for Star Wars fans and Phineas and Ferb fans. Because I'm a fan of Phineas and Ferb, I do quite like um, watching Phineas and Ferb. And so that's going to be 
broadcast next year on Disney Channel and Disney XD and so great, great stuff there. So that is pretty much all the news that I have for you this week. It has been a long show. If you're still watching now, I applaud you. Thank you very much. You've sat through me talking for a while and so thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been the Disney News Show, episode 88 for Sunday 21st of July 2013. For me, Joe Winston, aka Colin Spickoat. Don't forget to leave me comments, questions, um, your views on the Disney Question of the Week about Johnny Depp and his involvement with Disney. Um, leave them down below. You could write comments, of course, send me a personal message or contact me on Twitter. I'm at Quellers Fair Coats. Um, you also can go and check out the Curious Labyrinth and the blog over there and also my unboxing of Make My Music. Links down below. Um, don't forget to check out next week's episode. That'll be our episode 89 on Sunday 28th of July 2013. Um, I think that is pretty much it. I thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon. Goodbye.